So this is a very serious problem that the First Amendment is under attack. It's got very serious consequences. We have a guaranteed freedom of expression in this country. And that comes in various forms. So let's list those out. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. So these rights are under attack in this country, especially in Alabama, where striking workers have been told by the court where they can have their picket line. It has to be within 300 or over 300 feet from their workplace. The courts have also told them how many people can be demonstrating there on the sidewalk, a maximum of eight people and two people per every car. All right, this is directly going against the right to peacefully assemble. So Tuscaloosa's County Circuit Court Judge, Judge James Robert Jr. issued a temporary restraining order against United Mine Workers of America International to stop picketing at Warrior Met coal mining. So this violates their First Amendment right, of course. Let's get into this temporary restraining order. So the temporary restraining order issued by Judge Roberts continues the state of Alabama's assault on rights and freedoms of working families that has been the government's hallmark during this strike. It contains provisions that are unconstitutional and it reinforces the notion that Americans, at least in Alabama, are not free to enjoy their rights to free speech and free assembly. And I don't think that this is what Elon Musk is talking about when he's very upset about what's going on with the First Amendment in our country. So that was a, a quote from WBRC staff. Uh, they talk to people within the United Mine Workers Association. So our basic constitutional rights are being denied in Alabama. But why are the workers striking in the first place? Let's get into that. So reporting directly from the United Mine Workers. Walter Energy in April of 2011 purchased Canadian coal producer Western Coal for a staggering, staggering $3.3 billion after the company brand was changed to Warrior Melt Coal. A new collective bargaining agreement was reached that UMWA said left them little in the way of options, but in a show of good faith and to help save their jobs, union miners agreed to a 20% pay cut for the five year term which came in the range of six to $8 an hour for employees, depending on their pay grade. These concessions by UMWA members resulted in $1.1 billion in savings for the company. And I wanna show you this chart because this is not unique to the United Mine Workers over in Alabama. So this chart shows you the proportion of spending that companies in the United States have on labor costs. So from 1979 to 2019, you'll see in the light blue that this made up 61.8% of corporations spending. Now in 2020 to 2021, when they got data for this, it was 7.9% of their spending and compare this to corporate profits. So in 2020, you'll see in the dark blue, 53.9%. And in 1979, it was only 11%. So corporate profits are unpaid wages. This is money they've made off of workers labor that they haven't paid them. So Warrior Melt Coal making about $1.1 billion off of cutting their workers wages and getting them to agree to this contract. It's not something new, it's not something unique to those workers, but those workers are fighting harder than maybe anyone in the country right now. So in April 2021, this is again reporting directly from the United Mine Workers Union. That five-year collective bargaining agreement was set to expire. However, the deal presented by Warrior Met Coal at the bargaining table was met with overwhelming opposition by the union members that were affected. For instance, as it stands, the company has been unwavering in its offer of a $1.50 hourly pay raise phased in over the five years of the proposed deal falling well short of bringing the take home pay of miners to, to levels previous to the labor agreement. So before inflation was even up, the measure has been put to a UMWA member vote only once the strike began and it fell 95 to five in a show of solidarity for the coal miners union. So on day 587 of this strike, over 100 workers took to the streets to demonstrate that they will continue exercising their right to peacefully assemble. Let's watch this. 
So the workers showed up in solidarity with each other, but the cops showed up in solidarity with the bosses. Let's watch this. I want to show you a tweet from someone who was on the ground there, Kim Kelly. So wives of the striking workers offered to be there to protect them from the police. But then they got a message from Warrior Met's lawyer saying that the women would be risking 30 days in jail and would be arrested if they showed up. So this is a, a huge showing of solidarity of workers across Alabama. I talked with Hayden Wright, who is running the auxiliary fund because workers while they're striking do not have time uh, to, to provide for their families. They don't have the money to provide for their families. So they've come together and uh, they've built this auxiliary fund for United Mine Workers in Alabama. Instead of going to work, they have pantries for them. So while the bosses are very strong, workers solidarity, it turns out is stronger in Alabama. So they've been on strike for 588 days. And here's what one of the striking miners, Braxton Wright, who has worked at the mine in Brookwood for nearly two decades, had to say. We've cut back on non-necessary items. We don't get to go out maybe as much as we used to. Vacations are cut off or ended. My wife was sick and her pay was even cut out for a month. It was like playing Russian roulette with bills. You throw them out on a table and pick out which one you're going to pay at the time. So that's a sad situation and their response to this was to have the community create a weekly operation where they all met together at the Union Hall every Wednesday. They talked about how to best support the picket line, what they should be doing next with the strike, what direct actions they can do. And they also provided things like groceries and diapers for the United Mine workers. So the auxiliary president told me this morning that strikes are so much more important than just having a picket line. It's also about morale and taking care of each other. We come together and share the good times too. It's not just about times are hard. It's about providing diapers for families. This isn't just old miners with picket axes, it's also young families. So it's about providing things like clothing and diapers and food. And a really powerful statement I heard from Hayden this morning was that the abbreviations don't matter. What matters is we're all workers and we all come together in solidarity for change and progress. And they had workers from all different unions across the state there striking on the street with the workers demonstrating their power. And so you can also donate to this auxiliary fund to help these workers who are paying, playing Russian roulette with their bills, trying to provide groceries for their families. Uh, the link is also retweeted on my Twitter page, and you can also support the workers uh, pay their bills through donating to the UMWA strike fund. All right, so Jackson, I want to bring you in for any final thoughts here, but we have to be quick because we've got to wrap. My final thoughts is they got screwed over, plain and simple. They got robbed. That's there's nothing else to say. I would say more, but we, like you said, we got to wrap up. So, but yeah, they got ripped off. Nothing more to say. They got ripped off, mic drop. Solidarity with the workers on strike <laughs> yep. for 588 days. Make sure you donate to that strike fund. It's really amazing work down there.